I've been working on a pet project recently that I just can't get running fast enough. Okay. The crux of the problem is that I need to do multiple loops over 3D space and do some calculations on each. So this is this a matrix problem? Is this just a yet, yet another matrix video? Position within the space. After spending a lot of time in PProf optimizing the calculations, I got to wondering if there was a way to optimize the loop. By the way, the fact that it, so, so, oh, oh, I see what's happening here. X, X, okay, Y, Y. Okay, I see what's happening here. Okay, so it's an array of an array of an array. It's a three, it's a three dimensional array arrays. Being itself. Here's the basic looping structure yeah. I'm talking about. It's pretty it's a easy three to understand end. what's going on there, but there are a few different ways this could be structured. So I derived this simple test program to try out different mechanisms. The first one benchmarks Go's range instruction and is probably okay. the most common way that people loop over arrays That's since it's concise to it. write and easy to understand. The second... By the way, that range operation is really nice. I, I, languages with basic range items, very, very, very comfortable. You know what I mean? I like a nice range. I don't like a for each with a function, but I like a nice range. It feels good test is a more classic set of loops that iterate over yeah. the array offsets and address the requested element directly within the loop. I assume that one's worse. The third experiment is an optimization that I thought might speed things up by reducing the calls to the length instruction. I can't imagine. I can't essentially imagine. caching true. those values. My expectations were that the third method would be faster than the second, but I didn't know if Go optimized range enough to make it the fastest of the three or not. Which Before I, I haven't seen this before anything, I, my assumption is that the middle one and the last one will be the same, but the first one will be the fastest. That's my assumption. Here's part of the reason for the experiment. After running the tests, it's obvious that the Go compiler has some optimizations around the range statement, such that it's not only the clearest to read, but also the fastest to execute. For those that can't see, um, there you go. There's like this extra. So here's here's my here's my guessing why that's happening, is that the range statement is pulling out the array. It kind of seems like how it's aligned in memory is that each one of these things are, are its own rows. It's not like a big 1D array. It's like a bunch of individual arrays. And so you're getting these blocks of contiguous memory. And so the final one, you're just reading one block of contiguous memory. Whereas with, with this one, you're doing like, look at this, you're doing an access, an access, and an access. And so it's like you have to do a bunch of hopping is my guess what's going on. I don't know if Go optimizes that. I'm not exactly sure how they would optimize that. You know, I don't, you know, I assume that if you really thought about it, you could optimize it, but that'd be a very difficult, you know, thing to do. So that's, that's my assumption of what's going on here. Why that's why I assumed range would be better. So I'm curious if, if he talks about it. The thing that really surprised me was that caching the results of Len actually made the loop slower. The best I expected was that they'd be the same speed. Yeah, I don't really understand that. I'd also like to know how he's testing that, but that is shocking. I, 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 I cannot understand why that's the case. Speed, but apparently the compiler has some genius in it that recognizes the second structure and can create a highly optimized set of instructions from it. At this point, I thought I had my answer and that the result... By the way, never try to fight the compiler. General rule of thumb is that the compiler writes better code than you. And so you should just, just write like... The more you write standard code, the more likely you're generally doing well, if that makes sense. Very few times when you get cutesy does it actually make it better. And that's because most of the time you just don't you don't know what you're doing. And the compiler is just it's optimized for whatever like the common case is, and so then you just get all effed up, right? Uh, it's almost always good to write your code simple and straight to the point, and it, it just works. <laughs> result was, always so just trust write the compiler and So just write React.js and you'll be fine. Everything will be creamy smooth, you'll have a job, your server components will be serving components. Range statements. But then I had an idea for a few more optimizations to attempt. By putting all the data in a single array, I would need to calculate offsets to locate an individual position yeah. in 3D space. But huh. Can you imagine that contiguous memory is in fact faster? I assume one of the things that is happening right now is that when you have an array of an array of an array, uh, or a list of a list of a list, because this is Go, right? That's it's a list. It's not an array. It's it's some sort of moving underneath the hood list of memory. Is that you actually have three different locations that you're hopping to, but by making one big ass one, you only have one contiguous block of memory. And I always assume 
reading contiguous memory is just generally better than reading uh, non-contiguous memory. Like that's just like a, a standard. But often, I mean, the nice part is, is that for the most part in, in, in regular programming, you don't have to think about that. That's just not typically something you have to run into, though it is nice to know. Iterating through the entire list should be faster. Why is accessing slower if the lists are stack allocated? I don't know if they're stack allocated. I don't, it, are lists in Go stack allocated? I don't think they're stack allocated. I just always assumed, I don't, I don't see how they could be stack allocated. Like an array can uh, in C because you're like, hey, this array is length three. It's right here. We didn't call malloc or anything. It's like right here, right? That makes sense. There's no concept of stack versus heap and go. Yeah, but there is stack and heap and go. There is a concept of stack and heap and go, and they talk about it. Some things, they, they, there's like a whole set of rules about how, what stays on the stack versus the heap and all that, but you don't technically like do anything with it. You know what I mean? You could also alloc, uh, alloc and see, yeah. Go moves all the values onto the stack and stores pointers uh, to the first elements. I really don't know if any of that is true. It sounds false. It sounds false to me too. Uh, just because the hard part, you can't move memory on the stack. Like in the sense that you'd screw up all the return addresses and all the other shit in between, right? Like you can't just, you can't just move things. It's a stack. Like that, it's in its name. You can't just move plates out of the middle of a stack of plates and then create more plates on top. It just, just, do you see what I'm saying? It just do that. Anyways, okay. A go will, uh, let's see, will short-lived uh, static things on the stack regardless of their type. Okay, interesting. I wonder how that works. That sounds really interesting. Anyways, let's keep on going. Let's, let's, let's back this up for a moment. ...in 3D space, that iterating through the entire list should be faster. However, the speed was roughly equivalent to the three-dimensional array. Okay. Another issue with this test... Yeah, it's all very, very hard to say which one was faster there. ...is that I sometimes have to iterate through the dimensions in reverse order. So I wrote another test to simulate that use case, and boy was my mind blown. I created one more experiment in an attempt to understand what was going on, but it didn't clear anything up. At this stage, I don't even have a guess as to why the fifth test performed so well. After all this experimenting, it seems to me that most code should just use range statements. A 100 millisecond improvement over an array of 1 billion elements. Wow, that got really quiet at the end. It said one, uh, 100 millisecond improvement over a 1 billion array at the end. It's isn't much. It's certainly not enough improvement to have any impact on my current problems. Okay, I like that. It's interesting. I you know, I really do like when people when people document um just like what they're trying to do and what they're trying to figure out. Uh I also really like uh his confidence dropped. His confidence dropped severely on that one. You couldn't hear it. I, I think one thing that I really like about this entire situation that went on there is that, by the way, this is literally a video that this channel dropped this morning, and yet here it is showing up right there. Um, I really am happy that range statements performed well. I really, really like that, because at the end of the day, I really hate when you have to write stupid code and you're trying to like avoid performance pitfalls. Like the, the original JavaScript was just, you write the stupidest code, right? Do you guys remember this one? Uh, do you remember back in the day, you would write things like this? Like uh, you do, you know, var a equals this, uh, dap that, get the hell out of here. And then you do a length, uh, length equals zero to reset it, not a equals this. Cause it was actually just like, it would slow your program down. You do things like that to avoid it all, or you do, uh, you do, uh, a, uh, a dot length equals some new item to push. You wouldn't call a dot push, right? You would not call a dot push. Like you would just never do that one. Uh, dude. Okay. Shut up. I shut up. TypeScript there. Does that make you happy? Uh, okay. I'm happy now, but it's funny. Like you just do these dumb things and you had to be like, clever about it what about a range in python we all know python's greatest enemy is a for loop okay it doesn't matter what it is whether you're ranging or comprehending or whatever if you're doing anything in Py uh, python involving a loop you're using the wrong language okay python's not for loops python is that you you use you use pandas for loops okay you use pandas and numpy of which i don't know how to use very well so i don't use them because i suck at python i'm 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 terrible i'm terrible Generators help. Okay, that's good to know. Pirate software would never. He would never. Anyways, uh, real talk. Great. I love this. I actually really liked this video because I love the fact that Go just works well.
it's good enough for exactly exactly what he wants skill issues oh yeah skill issues trust me i, I suffer from python skill issues because the thing is is that i have two dynamic languages really strongly underneath my belt which of course is lua and javascript i really don't want a third one you know what i mean i use python to graph things but it's like very light and i just do just enough to get kind of out of, out of the way there i like that let's subscribe let's do that Great one, software chats. Great software chat. I love this style of video, this this live blogging. I'd love to see more of that. People just kind of just talking about stuff they're learning. It's good stuff. The name, the Primogen.